everybody, it's Chris, and today on What Are We Doing Amiga Stuff, we're taking a look and doing a recap job on the Amiga 4030. This is the one with the little small add-in card, usually came with the ECs, has an optional slot for a FPU or a other type of FPU, socketed or PLCC. So we're going to be ditching, it, ditching out, we're going to be getting out the service mount capacitors. I have a little bit of Hitachi's Panasonic's and Rubicon's and Panasonic surface mounts. This is all surface mount minus a couple of the 16470 showies. 3.0 ROMs in it. Stock. Super Buster 11. Everything else. Fat Gary. Alice. Lisa. CIA's Paula. And they're all. And Budgie of course. They're all surface mount. We're going to be replacing RAM sockets on this one because you're thinking hey that does not look bad. Here's the battery. U177 didn't take a poo, but everything kind of dripped this way. I think this board was sitting like this in storage, up on its nose down, because this is the back of the board, front of the board. When you flip her over to the dark side here, oh, juicy. That is all battery acid. You can see the funky Col Medina in the glare, how it is just, whoa. New sockets with the white metal tips from Mauser or Digicon. One of them are in the house. I'm going to have to poke through some of these holes because they're full of acid. Get my small poker tools out. Ta-da! And we'll get started. I'm going to get this board initially cleaned up. Take the power supply out of my 4000 so that thing needs to come apart so I have something to test on here. We also have the daughter card and a floppy drive to fix for this unit also. Okay, so after about 35 minutes of cleaning, just to make sure we're good, we Fired it up, Kickstart 3.0, 6230, 50 hertz PAL, 2 megs of chip, no fast detected. Alright, turning this off, pull this RAM out. I don't even know what this is. NEC, something, something, something. I'll put it in the very front slot here, which is just, they're all just crusty as hell. 2 mega chip in the back, once again. Mmm. Nope. Memory's gone. That means 891 is probably toast. Alright, we'll do the audio and that'll be the music mod. Sounds great. Individual channel. Strong audio signal. At least I know what I'm dealing with now. The unit works. The RAM does not. So we're going to make sure that we get these sockets out. That will take a long time. That is 380 pins, roughly, to de-solder. And I am not, due to the acid on the board, I am not going to solder suck them with the gun. I'm going to be going old school slow with a silicone tipped Kato solder sucker. If you're interested in one of these, I am not an affiliate, but you can get them on Amazon, eBay. I'll provide a general link to what I bought on eBay. If you can find it cheaper, by all means, get it cheaper. Uh, it is a standard solder sucker, unlike the old kind, which are these things, which work great. These are plastic tipped, and they're they're they have a good spring, but they're they're more of a not a really ergonomic. This is designed to be single-handed operated. The button is right on the end, and a thumbs grab away, you can squeeze the button. Left or right-handed, of course. Now, it's easy to clean, both ends unscrew. This is silicone, so you can stick it right over a molten hole, and right over, you know, right over a molten hole, and it will bend, and you can get good solder removal with it. I try not to use solder suckers if I don't have to because the old boards will give you hell. And you can see these. I don't want to damage any of the pins or the traces because they're tiny. I've talked about how we add solder to the pins before we remove them, especially on highly damaged. And as you can see, these are in great shape. So, yay. First, I'm going to do the cap job, get that out of the way. Or maybe I should just do the sockets, because that's the worst of it. I don't know. 
for my own memory, and since I'm going to forget, I'm going to write a C on this RAM chip. So I know it's the chip RAM. I wrote it right there. And maybe that's because I recapped it. The majority of the caps are 1647s on here, or 1622s, and that's why I have a whole string full of Panasonic's. I have another row of Hitachi's for uh, the rest of them, and audio we have Panasonic and various dudes. These don't look too bad. Couple slight with the brown solder. We're gonna get all that taken care of, cleaned up, and she'll be as good as new in just a minute, and then we'll tackle those death ram sockets. 6.42 p.m. Sunday night. Oh, dang it. All right, so while this is heating up, this is so battery damaged, I can see that this capacitor is just not even on here. It's literally not even on here. I can literally touch this thing. Watch this. This is 192. Ready? That's pretty bad. <laughs> I didn't touch it. But there's no trace on the board. That's great. So that'll be a wire through and tuck over. Yay. This one definitely leaked. You can see the green and the pad that came with it. 8.16 p.m. Recaps done. Audio circuit. Op amp. Decoupling capacitors. The, yep, that one, this one, um, all these, this, this, U891 lost its pins. I'm going to have to probably replace U891 in the, in, the, in the RAM socket, when I do the RAM sockets. Beneath these bad boys, because I tell you right now, that's messed up, that has no pins, and these are going to be a blast. Hey, it's the next day or the day after. Or another day, and I forget. Anyway, check out this socket. She's the uh, crusty kind. And there you go. This was extremely bad, and I hit it with this uh, new WD-40 contact cleaner. Please don't think this is WD-40, the oily spray. This is a contact cleaner. Fast drying, no residue, and it says specifically on the back... Made for circuit boards and electronics and all that other fancy stuff. It's kind of like deoxit without the oil. And it works pretty good. This was so white, it wasn't funny. I sprayed this crap on it, scrubbed it with the old plastic brush. Used the bronze on the socket afterwards to see if I could get any life back in this thing. I think this is going to have to be tossed because it's green through the pins and it's got chunks in there. 375 ads of solder and 375 solder sucks. I'm not putting the machine on it. I don't want to risk damaging any pins. So we're using the Kato manual single-handed Swedish enlarger pump. That's not mine. Own body. So there you go. You can see how it kind of Oops, missed that one. Comes out. Now, I do a lot better when I'm at the correct angle. Because I can see what I'm doing. Just can't see. Because I'm trying to show the camera. So, since I'm left-handed, how I was doing that, or like this, to show you, and that's why I couldn't get a good thing. Because I had the camera coming in under here, and I can't work like some gangsta. 1.31 p.m. Helmut Goober, five sockets removed, cleaned up U891, retinned it. I am a little leery about taking it off. I'm going to do some continuity testing on it. She is hanging on by a thread based on how 192 just kind of fell off. You know damn well 891 is going to also. If that happens, that is a freaking nightmare. She had some uh, schmutz on the bottom. We fiberglass penned it and shot it with that new cleaner and she's really uh, shining up. My fingers hurt extremely bad because I'm old and I had to use the uh, Swedish enlarger pump. That's not mine. A whole bunch of times and I've said that. Strong spring and this is fine and it's no big deal but when you're old and you do this 370 plus times, not that fast, it wears on you. So I'm going to go refuel with some poultry and cholesterol, and we'll come back and tackle something else. 
I have a couple wires to do. Uh, maybe between, mainly between these, ugh, that was too much tongue. <laughs> mainly between these two sockets here because the outer, I know I keep saying I'm taking a break. Right here and right here where these sockets kind of took the diarrhea. Remember, she was nose down. Kind of a plus. I'd rather replace SIM sockets, even though it's paying the babushka, than rewire U177, U975, 976, and your mom. I may have to run some wires between these two. I'll do it underneath if I can't drag solder these lines back together. So I promised myself an hour ago I was going to go eat, and now it's 2 o'clock, and I'm going to go eat. Okay, everybody, it's uh, 4.43 p.m. I polished off some chicken tenders. Putting SIM sockets back in is a piece of cake. Cross, uh, one at a time, of course. I'll start with the chip rim, work my way out. Okay, this is ugly. But, see how it's a loop? It's like the letter S, and I will... Can I go in any further? That's it. Maximum zoom. So, this is going to have some flux over top of it. Not the lid. And I'm going to melt some solder on it. Hey, look what you just made. You just made a leg. You know what can sit on top of that? A capacitor. Now it's a little bit too long. Maybe it's not long enough. I don't know. So that's one. That's how I make myself a new leg. Now I will drip some solder in this hole so it doesn't wiggle. Well, actually it's not wiggling now, which is great. When I heat that cap up and smack it on there, it's going to. Okay, so after a little while digging this out and carefully doing that wire twist, we have two new magic legs. Magic legs. Just like that, there's your cats. Hello, it's day five, four, five, six. Mega 4000, noise on 3D printing, a grease weasel case for someone. Suffered an unfortunate incident. The U8, uh, 891 memory management controller for the fast RAM wouldn't work. I was getting beeps and continuity and everything was cool and then it would lose continuity. Then it would have it and then it wouldn't. And then I noticed the chip was just like floating. Lo and behold, all the pins were rotted to the chip. The epoxy had been eaten through with acid. So I just spent the last 10 minutes chip quick fluxing these holes and what we got is this. This big pile of mess, don't be thrown off by my wire fixes, that's for a cap, they're gone too. So, I cleaned these holes, I just fluxed and cleaned these holes. Now we got some wires on the bottom because we had some damage here, some damage here, battery. You can see I wire modded, you know, 10 points, not bad. Two northbound, um, four different for shizzles and they're all good. Making new legs from these old legs. Now yes, I could use copper and the special epoxy that I don't own is super expensive and the green light thing and a microscope with a micro small exacto knife and copper cut new traces and Ain't nobody got time for that. 620. I got five legs done. So when it's in there long, see that? Then I solder it in and make it straight and then it hardens up and it's still. Once it's done, I'm going to get the chip on there and zap, 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 zap. And just like that, 8 o'clock through the magic of editing McDonald's chicken nuggets and the power of Grayskull, we have pads again. Mortimer, we're back. I got to clean it up a little bit. It's kind of slaggy on this side. I got a couple boogers, but all the pins are connected. Where you at? All the pins are connected, and I'll do the capacitor next. I'm just going to do triple check continuity tracing. But I'm going to take a breather. I'm hungry. I haven't ate anything in a couple hours. Okay. I'm all set up. Haven't hit the button yet. Chip is in. Continuity checked. Everything beeps. Fast RAM is in. New U851. <laughs> Diagram is in. Turn it on. Oops. Turn it on. This should come on. All right, screen will go diagrammy. Let's see if we get fast ram. Looking for the bottom down here to see if it says 16, 384, or something like that. 284, 384. Come on. 
hot dog, 16384. Two megs of chips, 16030. Bingo. I'm going to run through the memory tests. And we're going to do test detected fast mem. And green is freaking good. We're going to let that roll. Look for any goofies. Crap. This will take a while to get the 16 megs. So at least it does say detected memory 16384K. So with that complete fast RAM and fast RAM and the fast RAM thing, I'm going to turn this off. I'm going to hook up my hard drive for my Amiga 4000. Okay, here we go. Hard drive's booting. Lights are functional. I don't know if you can see that. It's so damn bright in here. This is booting. I have the 3.2 ROMs in here. I think my 4000 is 3.2.1. It's going to screw up because I have the Picasso card in mine. Then I'll do a double PAL resolution, which is a multi-scanish higher color. Remember, this is going to be an NCSC because it's my workbench, but it's on a PAL Amiga. So we'll fix that. Um, so this is what a PAL Amiga looks like running NCSC. Let's go to prefs, screen mode, and we'll, there we go, now we got the double PAL. So we'll go double PAL, high res, no flicker. Crank the colors up and say use. That way if it screws up, you just reboot and it's back. And that is color clarity for a PAL machine. We're a little bit shifted because I got to do the overscan, but that is groovy as in groovy player. So with that, we have another Amiga 4000 saved, but am I done? No, I'm not. What now? I off camera recapped the motherboard. I do need to test the final thing, and that is the daughter card. I believe I tested this already, but I'm going to test it again because you know how things work. We're going to the top slot, which is also the graphics slot in the front there. And we're going to go like, that won't fit, so we're just going to hit it. And I'm going to double mouse button so I can get the ROM screen here and do the expansion board check. Expansion board working, so that way we have Zorro and we are functional again. We'll let this boot one more time. I didn't say save because if I boot this card in my Amigas, it's going to be a mess. We're going to test the sound with the Davoom Tivu Space Debris. There we go. Cool. And with that, another Amiga has been saved. So we're going to pack this up, get this back to its owner pronto. It's got to go a long distance across an ocean and stuff. So anyway, Thank you guys for watching. I hope this crazy helps you somehow. Maybe with a tip or how I've done something. If you're interested in any of the tools or the things I use, they're linked in the description below. I would like to thank my patrons and supporters for helping me continue to be able to repair these Amigas for people who have been economically challenged where they would be not cost efficient to repair at a, a paid shop. So I want to thank you guys for always helping out, watching, learning. We're all learning, that's what it's all about. So as always, thank you for watching, and I hope you learned something. That's not mine.